you students the topic we are going to discuss is the jar test which is used to, for finding the optimum dosage of the coagulant previously when we discussed about the coagulant we said that we will be adding this chemical into the water in order to remove the turbidity which means the fine suspended particles present in the water so in order to find this how much of the coagulant has to be added to the water because whenever we are going to add it in more so it is also a chemical its quantity in turn will remain excess in the water that we don't want and also it is uneconomical and even when you are adding the quantity less than the required which is also not effective in removal of the turbidity that is why we need to find out the optimum dosage of the coagulant in order to find out the optimum dosage of the coagulant we will be going for a test called jar test many a times this is a question that is asked in the exam it is uh, like simple experiment which we are going to explain but uh, in case of the environmental engineering lab we have this as a part of one experiment so how this is being done how we are going to find out the uh, optimum dosage of the coagulant so in order to find that first of all we are going to prepare a solution of the coagulant solution of coagulant see either we can add it in a powder form better is to prepare the solution of the coagulant which is of the noun concentration generally alum is used for this experiment any other coagulants can also be used in this place so when we have this alum either you can add it in a grams proportion or else we can go for the solution of the coagulant if we are going to consider this we can consider it in mg or a gram if you are going to consider this we will be considering in a ml how much we are going to add how the test setup is done so in this case first of all jars around 1 liter capacity will be taken okay so required amount around generally six such jars will be taken so from this jars in this jars we will be adding the water which may be a raw water or any water which you have taken for the test we are going to add the same amount of water or the same water into all the jars so all the jars are containing the same water capacity also to be kept same if you are considering 1 liter all the jars are containing the same water for the quantity 1 liter to these jars we are going to keep it in a setup called jar test apparatus which will be just like this okay so which will be present like this we will be keeping it in a instrument which will be having all the setup that is made in order to control the flocculation that is process of the rotation here it will be having the mechanism to control the rpm that is rotations here it will be having each of the rotating paddles each of the paddles we have to keep it in such a way that each of the paddle has to be dipped in the each of the jar so these are the rotating paddles once we adjust the once we adjust the rotation over here with the same velocity these paddles keeps rotating that is the mixing condition we can get it here by the jar test apparatus so once we have dipped in this this setup is ready now what is the next next thing we are going to do we are going to add the solution of the coagulant or else the coagulant in a powder form directly into these jars so we will be adding them from minimum to maximum in order to find out the optimum dosage so first of all we may add it here the 1 ml of the solution 2 ml of the coagulant solution like the 3 ml 4 ml and a 5 ml so at initial stage what we are going to do is we are going to keep the rpm to 80 to 100 rotations per minute so that 
first of all it is a fast mixing process whenever it is given a fast mixing so the uh, coagulant which is present completely comes in contact with all the particles that is there in the water rapid mixing and then we want the flocculation to take place so to do that after 2 to 3 minutes we will be lowering the rpm and we will be slowing it down to 10 to 20 rpm okay, even it can be less also so when this is given the agglomeration of the particle starts taking place. Now, the coagulant which has came in contact with all the particles, fine particles present in water, now has stickered around the fine particles. Now, these particles upon slow mixing come close to each other and they stick together. Because of that, they come to the bottom and settles down after giving some sufficient time. So, what is the final conclusion here? We have added different dosage to each of the jar. So, we will be checking visually which jar is having the less turbidity water. So, that will be giving us which jar is having uh, optimum dosage which can do the maximum of the work. So, since we are adding more of the coagulant, it may have removed better. But we don't want to go for uneconomical dosage. We want to choose with the minimum dosage what can be the best work done. So, in order to do that, we will be visually checking which water is more clear and we will be picking that as a optimum dosage. And we say that as a optimum dosage for that particular water. Optimum means it should be in an economical range as well as it should do our intended work. So, in modern setups, we generally do not go for a visual finding. What generally we do is, uh, we are going to use the FLO turbidity meter in which the initial turbidity of this water will be found. Initial turbidity by making use of the digital instrument. Once initial turbidity is known, after completion of this coagulation process, we are going to take with the no disturbance, we are going to just to take the surface water uh, for around 10 ml and we are going to test the same sample that is a final turbidity we are going to check. So, which dosage is giving us? the maximum removal of the turbidity that we consider as a optimum dosage in a actual experimental conditions as otherwise previously we used to find it by just the visual methods this is about the jar test